Is it possible the Acolyte isn't a good show? No, it must be getting review bombed. The response to criticism of popular media is so predictable you could set your watch to it. I mean, who didn't see this coming? From Screen Rant. The Acolyte Review Bombed. And, because you know this narrative always brings a friend, the Acolyte's backlash and review bombing explained. What's really going on? Well, I could explain it to you, but I'm pretty sure YouTube doesn't like that much swearing. The simple answer is that this is the narrative. If fans reject something that checks all the identity politics boxes, then their criticism can't be legit. It must be that they just hate the new thing. Now, to be fair, there are definitely people who review bomb. Like the first article says, one of the tells is that the review is from a new account. Another tell is a simplistic review. No real plot points or key elements from the show, just the basic outline followed by, it sucks. Another tell is that the reviews sound the same. That's usually a sign that the person hasn't watched the show and got their opinion from someone else, probably from Twitter or YouTube. But that wouldn't account for all the negative reviews, which Screen Rant had to admit. There are legitimate negative critiques of the show. Whether they're getting drowned out by the review bombing like Screen Rant claims isn't clear. Screen Rant also claims that some of the reviews are AI generated and uploaded by bots. I don't know if that's true, but I can't say that people wouldn't do that. What I can say is that this narrative has gotten old. In the first article, Screen Rant says about the reviews, quote, It's important to note that there are probably genuine criticisms amid the review bombing, drowned out by the campaign. Some critics have called out pacing and dialogue problems, and those could well pose a problem to members of the audience as well, resulting in negative reviews. Ironically, the review bombing campaign means real dissatisfaction is impossible to evaluate, while those who love the acolyte wind up on the defensive. It's a self-defeating strategy, because it makes it easier to tune out any criticism as part of the campaign. Except tuning out the criticism has always been the policy. There's no concern about real dissatisfaction with these shows. The issue is that anyone dares to reject them, at least when they come out. Wait a few months and then the narrative shifts. Suddenly it's okay to call out all the problems with the show. This happened with the Rings of Power. Within a fortnight of the season ending, there were articles talking about how the show sucked. These were from the same people who praised the show and called all the critics istophobes. And that's the angle Screen Rant takes with the Acolyte. Quote, the Acolyte is headed by a lesbian showrunner. It stars female and Asian leads, meaning it was always going to be controversial with this part of the fandom. The campaign against the Acolyte has hardly been in good faith, with many quotes pulled out of context in social media. When star Daphne Keene discussed the ambition to produce fight choreography as good as that of Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, it was seen as an insult to the prequels rather than proof of how highly they were held by the creative team. Kennedy and Hedlund addressed the Acolyte backlash ahead of their show's release, calling out what they perceived as racism and sexism. Yeah, there were people looking for anything and everything they could find to preemptively trash the show, the showrunner, and the actors. YouTube is full of videos doing that, but that doesn't invalidate the criticism of the show. The Acolyte is a very mid-show. Like I said in my review, it's not bad, but it's not good either. It's just there. It's watered-down Star Wars, and the way this article danced around the pacing and dialogue problems tells me that in a few months, we're going to see Screen Rant saying that the show wasn't that good. And they're probably going to blame that on the attempt to make the show for a broad audience, even though in their second article about the Acolyte, they seem to praise that idea. Quote, Controversy is hardly usual for Star Wars, but the last few years have seen it drawn into the culture wars. This is largely because of an intentional drive to increase diversity and representation in the franchise, accompanied by an attempt to reach international audiences rather than focusing on traditional demographics. Because when you think Star Wars, you don't think space operas, starship battles, and laser swords. You definitely think diversity and representation. I mean, Star Wars was this piddling little franchise relegated to Toys R Us, Best Buy, and Barnes & Noble shelves. No one was even thinking about this floundering series that barely managed to survive American theaters, let alone in the global market. I'm sorry, what now? A massive success. A blockbuster. Literally lines of people wrapped around city blocks. Domestically and globally. Five decades ago. It's been popular since the 70s. Everywhere. There's literally not a place you can go on Earth where they don't know Star Wars. Damn, it almost sounds like Star Wars didn't need diversity and representation to grow. It already had a gigantic international audience. That's always been a problem with that silly narrative. Star Wars is so popular that it's one of the two franchises that comes to the average person's mind when someone mentions science fiction, the other being Star Trek. 
The idea that only straight white men enjoy Star Wars, or that they're the only characters in the series, is just nonsense. The prequels and the expanded universe are full of female, non-white, and gay and bisexual characters, both as humans and alien species, although technically the humans are aliens too. The reason none of these people whining about identity politics know this is because they're all fake fans and posers who haven't watched, played, or read anything Star Wars related. Definitely not on purpose. Most of them are only interested because Star Wars hit pop culture again, and some of them are ideologues just trying to tear down things other people like. Screen Rant inadvertently hits on this, quote, Most Star Wars backlashes are really about ownership at heart. They're an attempt by a portion of the fan base to claim ownership of the franchise, insisting that it should conform to their expectations or to the pattern of their childhood. Given that's the case, it's no surprise that the focus on diversity and representation, accompanied by the broadening of the target audience, has proved controversial. Look at the irony and the hypocrisy of this argument. It's wrong for actual Star Wars fans to want the franchise to conform to their expectations, but it's perfectly fine to demand that it conform to someone else's expectations. By the way, Star Wars doesn't need any help gaining an audience. It was a huge global success from the start. Nothing stopped people from watching Star Wars or reading the books or playing the games. What happened was that some people chose to treat Star Wars as this nerdy thing that was beneath them until it was socially cool to like it. So now they're pretending to like it until it falls out of pop culture again. But I have a basic question. Why is the focus on diversity and representation? Why isn't it on storytelling, world building, and character development? You know, the main things that drew people to Star Wars in the first place. Abandoning that would be controversial in any story-driven franchise. You're taking the hook of the franchise and throwing it away to appease some phantom audience. This is why fans complain. You don't have to take away the things fans like to bring in new people. You just need to introduce those new people to what's already there and do it slowly so you don't scare them off with too much information. You don't have to water down Star Wars to make it palatable for everyone. When you do that, fans will complain, and they will leave negative reviews on these piss-poor attempts to broaden the audience. And that gets us back to this claim about review bombing, and my favorite piece of evidence that Screen Rant presents. See, they compiled the list of the critic and audience scores for the Star Wars shows, and they showed the percentage difference between the two. As you might expect, the Acolyte has the highest difference, 93% for the critic score and 30% for the audience score, which comes out to a 67.74% difference. That's nearly 30 points higher than The Mandalorian Season 3. So it must be review bombing because it's not possible that The Acolyte could be worse than Mando Season 3 or, say, The Book of Boba Fett. Let's grant them the review bombing claim. Let's say there's been an unusual number of negative reviews. What would be the correct number? Based on their chart, The Book of Boba Fett and Mando Season 3 are the least liked shows, and they're in the 50s. So is that where The Acolyte should be? Also, it's possible the positive reviews are cooked too. It wouldn't be the first time that reviewers say positive things about something they don't like, and they do it for many reasons, from continued access or to spite the people who don't like the show. Maybe that 93% is closer to Mando and Ahsoka's upper 80s. It's possible, right? We saw this happen with the Rings of Power. It's happened several times with video games. Maybe some of those positive reviews aren't all that honest. Screen Rant admits that these figures can be manipulated. Even the data coming directly from Disney isn't trustworthy. Disney claims that the Acolyte got 4.8 million views on its first day, but as Screen Rant says, Disney counts people turning off the show part way as a view. It'll take some time to see how people actually feel about the show. By the end of the season, we'll have a clearer picture, but I don't think that would change the claim that people are review bombing as a defense for the show's poor reception. I don't doubt that some people are spamming negative reviews, but just like with the Rings of Power, they can't all be bots or AI or false reviews. Even if half the reviews are fake, that would still put the Acolyte's audience score somewhere in the 50s, maybe the 60s, and that's not a good sign. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.